Houston and surrounding areas. Did a recent hurricane or hailstorm damage your roof? If so, call Alpha Roofing and Claims at 682-206-3109 and ask for Jazz, your new favorite roofer. You had mentioned Corey, Corey Blunt earlier, man. Talk about Corey Blunt, because he was another young dude, you know what I'm saying? That's my boy, he home now, man. They yeah. gave him a life sentence, and uh, shit, you know, he gave that shit back, man. And, you know, he just trying to adapt to the way of life right now, try to find his way, trying to figure things out right now, you know. And uh, I talk to him a lot, man, and try to, try to, you know, help him out with it whichever way I can, because I know coming from the status from back then where he was at. I know one thing about when you go to jail, when you go in, you go in, you might come out thinking the way you went in, depending on how you do your time. So the way he went in and the way he coming out, is he's not thinking the way he went in because you got to think he was a kid down there when he went in. Man, the man shit down there 50 years old now, you know what I'm saying? So. You know, he's just trying to find the right way to make money, the legal way. You know what I'm saying? And I'm uh, basically trying to give him the, the the information I have. I don't know nothing but driving trucks. So when a person come talk to me, all I can tell you is the quickest way to make some money, get you a doula and a 40-foot trailer, go get it. 30-foot trailer without CDL, go get it. Because it's out there. Because I'm a person who, you know, had to make a transition from street life to working. And it's not easy, but the money that you make driving trucks is not totally like that, but you can make a decent living, a good living driving trucks. So anybody that I, try, that I know making a transition, if you up for it, all I can do is tell you, hey, go this route, man, because I'm doing it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I got a nice crib. I pay my own bills, you know, shit. Just got married, you know. It's just like life. Life. I wish I'd have did this shit. I don't. I don't miss the things as far as the music was screwing them and the experiences, but I wish I'd have been on working early instead of just just saying I ain't work for no white folks no more. I'm not no more. Never. I told my mom, I'm like, I ain't never working for no white motherfucker for real. Mm can't lie to yourself, because that's just a, a, a young mind way of thinking. But the, the thing right now, to me, if you work for a white person, strive for the, learn as much you can, uh, learn as much you can learn, make the max you can make that. Once you outgrow that, start your own shit. Because you'd have learned everything from the motherfuckers, start your own shit. That's my that's my way of thinking, and and some things of, of starting your own shit. Like in my case, I don't the company out the white the, the the white company I work for, I don't actually have to leave there and start on my own. I just buy me some trucks and lease them on with them, and I'm still my own person. You feel what I'm saying? Because when it comes down to trucking, you got to be with a big company to stay making money nowadays. Once you, you can venture off on your own, but you're gonna get the crumbs of the industry. So you gotta stay with a big company, but just be your own boss. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, that's just what I see. Yeah, but now uh, we are talking about Corey Blunt though, but man, talk about like back in the day, man, like just him kind of just being young, cause I mean, he was heavy in the slab, and I mean, just in that whole movement too. Couldn't nobody out slab him. Hmm. I don't think, I'm talking about everything the man pulled out was sweet. You know, like, uh, hey man, everything this man did, the cars was perfect. You know what I'm saying? When that mother come down, it looked like a dream. I just don't think nobody, I slapped him. You know what I'm saying? The closest person that I know came to just out slapping this cat is Condre. It's a nigga out of North Dale. It's the closest mother, them niggas, them niggas there, motherfucker. And them two niggas there know how to put a car together, but Blunt, mm. that nigga, you know, and then the thing about what I liked about him so much, he was a good, a good guy. He didn't really, uh, 
altercation with him wasn't an altercation. You, that mean you you was hating on him. If he ever, if you got into it with him, you was hating on him. Like you ain't like him just because of whoever the fuck he was, you know. But that that's that's my boy, man. And uh, I just hope he, you know, find his way. In any two ways that I can help, you know, that's what I've been doing. But uh, for us back then, man, that's a nigga who, uh, that's a nigga who make you want to go put your shit. That nigga will make you go put your car up, man. <laughs> that nigga, you come down there and you ride with Corey, you be like, man, I got to put this motherfucker up. I got to take this hoe to the shop. Because, you know, we always had tight engines. But the way that motherfucker put the interior, man, you, everywhere he went, that's where you want to go. Hmm. He set the trends for the slab, man. If he went surround by sound, man, I'm going to surround by sound, nigga. If he went to Alfredo to get his insides done, I'm going to Alfredo. If you went to Ike to get his, the only thing I didn't fuck with was Ike. Ike could do some paints, but I went, I went to that, I went to that dude paint shop one time with Dez from the Botany Boys, and I was leaning on his car. And that motherfucker say, you can't afford that car, get out for it. Hmm. <laughs> I said, you some, and I, you know, I was having some money, but see, I didn't look like I had money. So I'm like, bitch ass nigga, so I started fuck with his brother. I was gonna take my car over there to get it painted. I said, I wish I would get this motherfucker my money. My big cousin was going to Jack. So we turned Jack up. We was the first niggas out of Jack. Hmm. So while niggas was fuck with Ike, my cousin and me, we was the first niggas out of Jack. Condre and them started coming there. We was the first niggas out of Jack. We blew Jack up. I ain't fuck with Ike. Never got nothing done from Ike and never will. From that, and his son running now, I don't fuck with now one of them Ikes. Cause hmm. I, just from that one incident, you know what I'm saying? I got a problem with that nigga. <laughs> I, but I, Cause back then I was wild. I said, that motherfucker just don't know how I, I come back to this motherfucker and tear this bitch up. But you know, it wasn't worth it, man. I was like, fuck it, man, how, shit. How do you, uh, how you get to 93 AD? Fat Pat. Fat Pat gave me that name, man, because uh, we used to be in the circle, man. You know, we slammed up out there and shit. Back then, you know, niggas call themselves jacking. And we never got, you know, jacked or nothing. But, you know, the jacking era was going on. So, you know, we always be out and shit. And uh, a car come through and they'd be like, uh, damn, man, I ain't got my strap. Who's strap? I'd be like, shit, I'm strap. Shit, what you got? I said, I got 11 shots. I got 380. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, cool, we cool. And this shit happened on so many different occasions. That nigga Fat Pat just say, man, you always got that motherfucker 380. Man, I'm starting calling your motherfucking ass 380D. And that shit stuck from there. Hmm. That shit stuck from there. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston.